All right, so this is our review from last week, week eight of Intro to Visual Art. Last week we talked about painting, and uh, the week before that we talked about drawing. So painting is the process of applying paints to a surface such as canvas to make a picture or other artistic composition. Painting is very accessible. Uh, at least in today's day and age, and most of you probably have experienced painting, if not recently, at a young age. So paint is a liquid substance that converts to a solid film when applied to a surface. Surface. There are many different substances, uh, or uh, to that that painters use, and the substance is called the medium. Medium has pigment in it. Pigment is a granular solid, so uh, or or a chemical sometimes. But uh, pig, pigments come from around the world, often uh, minerals or organic matter, just such as like tree sap. Um, they might be, for example, with black. It's uh, charred bones or wood and it's suspended in the medium so last week we spoke about fresco and caustic tempera oil acrylic watercolor spray paint and experimental painting this is Sistine the Sistine Chapel by Michelangelo this was painted as a fresco fresco is where you take your paint or your uh, sort of a watered down pigment and you apply it to a wet plaster. So as you're putting spreading plaster on the ceilings or on the walls, you're adding this pigment to it and it soaks into the plaster and it's permanent so long as the wall stays intact. So this is the altar from the Sistine Chapel. Frescoes uh, by Diego Rivera were popular in the early part of the 20th century. Encaustic was very old, is a very old process. Encaustic is where you take pigment and you melt it, in, or you put it, you put it in melted wax, and then you paint that melted wax onto uh, your surface, and that max wax cools down. Um, with encaustic, you tend to get lots of layers, and it's not very easy to mix the paint after it's been applied. A more contemporary version from 1955 of encaustic. Tempera paint is the use of egg yolk. So you take your egg yolk and you mix it with your pigment it's nice and sturdy. It uses bright colors. It was popular for a long time because it's nice and smooth and uh, easier to mix than encaustic, but it dries very, very quickly. And then we had the, de had the development of oil paint. Oil paint was a breakthrough because it takes so long to dry. It allowed artists to become more realistic with the artwork, with their painting, because they can blend it. The time it takes for oil paint to dry, though, is annoying, to say the least. It can take a very long time for it to dry. And that's why acrylic paint is interesting uh, and useful, is because you can get all the color range with acrylic paint, um, and but it dries faster. It doesn't dry immediately in the same way that tempera does. It takes more time, but paint is dry within hours, if not hours, within a day.
Watercolor is a general word that we use for uh, pigment added to water. What people commonly refer to as watercolor would more accurately be called aquarelle. This is an aquarelle painting. Gouache is similar, uh, but it is a higher concentration. It's very opaque. Then spray paint, paint in a can. Spray paint is great because you can go to the store and buy whatever color. It's totally mobile. You can take it with you. Uh, that's what the graffiti artists like about it. But some sort of spray paint arguably has been around since forever. So that this is pigment that was chewed up in the mouth of a cave person. And then they used a straw or a reed to spray it or spit it onto the wall. These are 17,000 year, year old handprints. Experimental painting. So this is Jackson Pollock. What he was really known for was not using a paintbrush in any traditional way. He would dip his paintbrush in the bucket and he would drip the paint or fling the paint onto the canvas. This is a great one with Janine Antoni painting the floor with her hair. She, the paint, the in air quotes paint she's using as hair dye. This is a stamp of a woman's body five times. A really wacky artist that uses peanut butter of all things uh, in this work where he mixed it with a joint compound. All right, that's it for the review. Let's check out our questions from last week's quiz. What was the technique called that Michelangelo used to paint the ceiling and altar of the Sistine Chapel? Describe that technique. Michelangelo's method was fresco. Frescoes are made by applying watered down pigment to wet plaster. The plaster soaks into the pla the pigment soaks into the plaster and is permanent. Explain what an illuminated manuscript is. Illuminated manuscripts were vi visual versions of the Bible and other holy texts. Each page was painted by hand to illustrate biblical text. Illuminated manuscripts were common in Europe, the Middle East, and North Africa during the Middle Ages and into the Renaissance. Why did artists find oil paint appealing? How did oil paint change the future of painting? Artists were attracted to oil paint because, compared to other paints, they took a long time to dry. Because oil paint takes so long to dry, artists were then able to blend paint, allowing for a more accurate range of color and precision in mark making. Alright, so, describe the figure in Ginny Seville's painting still. Are they alive? Do the colors in this painting lead you to this con conclusion? Whatever answer you come you came up with uh, is a valid answer as long as you have a reason in your answer. Personally, I associate blue flesh with deceased people. The cut on the figure's forehead along with bruising and swelling in the eyes suggests to me that they have passed. That's my personal answer. How do you think Gerhard Richter made the painting Birkenau? 
Whatever you write is correct as long as you think through the process. Again, whatever you write is correct, you just have to have an answer that, like reasoning for your answer. Personally, I think he brushed or applied thick paint to the canvas in an impasto style. It looks to me like he scraped through the paint and even spread it across the canvas. He must have done it with, done it a bunch of times because there are a lot of layers to the painting. That's it for the review. After this, go ahead and watch the lecture. And then remember to watch the Art of the Day presentations. And then take your quiz.